quick confession, I'm not actually logged into a Raspberry Pi here in this terminal. I'm logged into uh, a fresh VPS that I just created for this tutorial. Um, but the process is the same. So I'm going to show you how to use um, Let's Encrypt. I've got uh, a pretty, well, you're already at this tutorial, right? So I don't need to explain that to you, or it's in the comment or the, the notes section of the video. So what we need to do is actually, I don't think I even have git installed on here yet. So I'm going to do sudo app git install. Yes, I probably need git and build essential and vim and tree. And I forgot to do what every good boy does. I forgot to do app git update first. Now it'll install the rest. All right, now that I've got Git and some of those basic tools, I'll go ahead and do this Git clone of the Let's Encrypt repository. This is a Python application. And then I'm just gonna go in there and I need to run this uh, bootstrap process that's gonna download, it's gonna make sure dependencies and whatnot are installed. This only takes a minute. The next two steps take quite a bit longer. Okay, the next step is to set up the virtual environment for Python, which is similar to RVM in Ruby or NVM in Node. It's just uh, creates a sandbox basically for this, this bunch of Python and tools that we're going to be using. And that one didn't take very long. This next one, this one takes a couple minutes. Um, on the Raspberry Pi A, I think it takes about 30 minutes. Um, on the average VPS, I think it only takes about two or three. On the Raspberry Pi 2, which has much more memory and processing power than the Raspberry Pi A, I don't think this would take anywhere near 30 minutes though. All right, there we are. So the next step, um, if you have a firewall, you want to make sure that uh, HTTPS is allowed through. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add these even though I don't think, well, on this fresh installation, I don't think either of those are even, uh, the, the UFW isn't even enabled. Um, and then before we can run the, so there's the Let's Encrypt right there. Before we can actually run this, I need to have a domain set up that it's going to work on. So I can get a free domain from freedns.afraid.org and click on subdomains. I had to log in and create an account. I've got another video I'll link to if you need to see this whole process walk through. Um, but there was just an add button. I've already gone through and done this. I've called it letsencrypt.moo with an extra o dot com. And then that's the IP address of the server. I'll just verify that. Uh, one of the nice things about DigitalOcean is if you delete a server and then create one seconds later, you get the same IP address back. So my nice fresh server has the same IP address as the one I was just using. Anyway, so I've got that there. Um, and then I need to run the Let's Encrypt tool. So we'll do sudo. Uh, I probably should just copy and paste this. No, I don't really want to. So of course you need to change it to be your email address and then your domains, but I'm going to be using letsencrypt.moo.com and then the standalone authenticator is gonna work just fine. And we're doing the auth process. I also want to go ahead and say that I only want this process to be text and I want to go ahead and agree to the EULA. I think there was a couple other options. Let me look at my other article here. There's a couple other options that I liked to just pass. I like to pass everything on the command line. I don't like to have to monkey around with GUIs and whatnot. You know, just give me the command line. Let me put in the options. I'm happy. So yeah, it's agree, EULA, text, and then I'm going to go ahead and specify this option, even though I don't have to. Um, but uh, and it's only 
you're only allowed to do this on port 443 currently as the spec stands and I've got another video that addresses what to do when you want to run your web server and be able to renew your certificates at the same time um, but just so you know that options there uh, and this is all we need um, now actually before I run this let me just show you a little something something um, I hit uh, control C to cancel there so Etsy let's encrypt the folder let's encrypt doesn't even exist now I'm gonna run this command it's gonna take just a few seconds All right, that went and fetched my certificates. It's giving me a nice warning, letting me know that, uh, oh, no, I put a GRI EULA, so it didn't even give me the warning, but it would have given me a, a warning, let me know, you know, this is still beta, these certificates aren't valid yet. So important notes, um, there's my recovery token, it's gonna send to my email address, uh, Everything saved into Etsy Let's Encrypt and automatic renewal and deployment has been enabled for my certificate. Let's see those settings and config. Okay, so now I need to do this as sudo because a lot of the stuff in this directory is uh, for, re for root only. But now you can see um, the account that it's set up with let's encrypt demo.org and my email address was the registered email address and then the archive is where all the files actually are um, but live is what we're interested in so live here shows uh, that there are some certificates and they link to the ones in the archive uh, and this is kind of a nice standard location we can depend on. So now I want to show you uh, how I'll use these. I've just got a simple web server um, that I've created just for this purpose. So let me just Google that and it should come up on GitHub hopefully. Uh, let me try GitHub. I want to look at the docs on GitHub. Ah, there it is. It's actually this one probably should rename the repository um, anyway uh, so oh oh I need to install node.js let me do that real quick so I'm gonna do iojs easy install and then that comes here there's just a little one-liner that I can copy and paste all right so now node is installed and I can npm install dash g serve https. This is a little static file server I created that serves over https and gives you some options uh, to be able to change like which certificates you want and stuff. Um, so I actually have an alias built in for let's encrypt so I could specify the key and the cert and the chain and the server name and all that but I'm just going to copy and paste this doodad right here and I'll actually, oops, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit enter and let it run. And then I'm gonna hit up here because I pasted it and then I couldn't go back and change it. So it's gonna be let's encrypt dot dot com. And I'm actually gonna serve this on the root port. No, I gotta use sudo regardless of what port I use because. Um, it's got to read those certs from the, the directory that's protected by root and so like I was saying the let's encrypt certs is just an alias for these four options and then the uh, serve chain is because with newer certificates a lot of them aren't built into your operating system so utilities like curl and um, your programming languages node Ruby your open SSL library they're not necessarily going to be updated to have the latest certificates even though your browser will be on your desktop and on your phone um, so I'm serving the chain so that I'll be able to download it and um, and then use it immediately so now I'm going to open up a new window this is on my Mac not on my server and I'm going to do curl HTTPS 
um, let's encrypt. And, and when I pull this, you'll see that I get an invalid certificate problem. So I have to use dash dash insecure. Um, but that is going to give me, that's serving up the, the certificates because I passed that serve chain option. Um, I'll just call this chain.pem. All right, so now I can see there's the certificate right there. If I curl again, and I give it the CA cert option. Now it's going to work without complaining because I'm telling it, hey, even though this program hasn't been updated with the latest certificate chains, um, that there they are, uh, or, or here, here, here's the one that you need to know about, so you don't think that this is insecure. So I'm manually specifying that. Now, as it turns out, if I actually go to Let's Encrypt .com, it's going to tell me my connection is not private because when we look at the certificates, this is the Let's Encrypt demo, not the production site that will be available in September. And so when you look at these, uh, these certificates, they're not actually the real ones. But this demonstration with curl is valid because um, when, uh, when they do get updated in September, curl won't immediately update. Um, you know, it'll be in the some future update of OSX that curl or OpenSSL that curl relies on will get updated and the newest certificates will appear in the chain. Whereas uh, Chrome, I think, will get the update that it needs for these certificates probably in July. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and click advance and say, yeah, I'm going to, I'm okay with proceeding to that. And then there we can see I've got my nice uh, server. Let me go back. All right, so this one was on my Mac. I'm going to close out of this one. So I'm going to hit Control D to close out of it. Uh, Control C to cancel that server. And then instead of serving the chain, um, I'm going to serve the directory slash temp. Let's see how that works out. So now if I refresh, so there is my slash temp directory. Uh, so yeah, there, there you go. We installed, uh, we followed the, the installation process. This is detailed on the, the actual Let's Encrypt documentation as well. But we followed the installation process. Um, we allowed it through the firewall and then we ran the command to be able to grab our certificate. And then we validated that the certificate was working. Let's see, what was that? Nope, I don't wanna. Oh yeah, and we, we looked through the directory structure. Um, oh, I guess I should mention just real quickly, uh, cert.pem is the server certificate only, chain.pem is the immediate CA, and I th think might also include the root CA. Uh, that is important to know, because some servers like their pem files this way or that way. Full chain has the server certificate, and the chain, and then the priv key is the server's private key. So that's pretty self-explanatory. And then uh, this uh, bunch of code right here is essentially um, what what the uh, serve HTTPS module is based on. So um, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let's encrypt. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top, give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.